A quick story about my first visit to St. Clair's Hospital here in St. John's Newfoundland. Uh, in 1996, I arrived here to Newfoundland from former Yugoslavia as a failed rock and roll musician and an officer in the army. And I ended up getting a job at a ship pub first as a cook, then as a bartender, a waiter, then even as a musician too. Uh, one morning, we were setting up the restaurant for lunch. It was about 11.30 in the morning when I started experiencing these like sharp pains in my belly. It was, it was bad. It was really, really bad. It was like somebody was stabbing me with a knife. And, you know, I tried to endure once or twice, you know, thinking it would pass, but it wouldn't pass. And it became worse and worse. So my friends, Mike and Emir, who worked with me, uh, said, look, look, you gotta go to the hospital. So Mike said, I will take you, I got a truck. So he put me in his truck and uh, drove me to St. Clair's Hospital. And the moment we arrived there, I just, you know, I fell down on the floor. Uh, I was in the, in the fetus position. It was painful. I started vomiting, screaming, give me something for pain, give me something for pain, you know? And because I was wearing this like green t-shirt that, that had a tie-dye eye right in the middle of it and these purple pants, courtesy of my friend Fanula. <laughs> I got a pair of beige corduroy pants and I asked her if she could tie-dye them black. She said, yes, you know, I'll just put a little bit of purple just to kind of make them a little interesting. And they turned out completely purple. <laughs> so there I am in these purple pants with this green tie-dye t-shirt, earrings, you know. Uh, I think I had red hair at that time too. So I'm just down on the floor, like rolling around, you know, screaming. Give me something for pain, give me something for pain. And as they are trying to like get my name, my address, my religion back in the day, you could ask a person, you know, whether they were, you know, Christian or Muslim. I remember my friend saying like, what difference does it make whether he's Christian or Muslim, you'll still have to help him. And they said, no, 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 no difference. We just need to know. <laughs> a lot has changed since then, definitely. And they just thought I was a drug, drug addict, that I was somebody, you know, going through a withdrawal or something like that because I looked apart. You know, ne nevertheless, after a few moments, they decided to bring me into the uh, emergency room and I was, you know, they told me, please lie down on this desk and wait. Oh, I could not, the pain was unbearable. I was screaming, yelling, vomiting. It was, it was horrible. Finally, a doctor came in and I told him, look, I am not a drug addict this is real pain you know it hurts here and there and and then he understood that yeah these the, these pains were symptomatic of kidney stones god damn it uh they say that passing a kidney stone is like giving a birth to a child i've never given a birth to a child i've seen two and you know what it was i would say just as painful it was horrible, it was horrible. So he said, you know, give this guy, give this man, you know, a shot of morphine. And I remember the very first time I experienced the sweetest nectar of, of gods, the best man-made invention that is morphine. Uh, the moment that liquid entered my body and just started like circulating through my, through my blood, it just felt divine. All the pain was gone, all the worries were gone. The war never happened. <laughs> the kidney stones are not there. I don't have to go back to work. Everything is wonderful. A few moments later, uh, the nurse asked me if I was still in pain, if I wanted another shot. And of course, you know, being of an addictive personality that I am, I was like, oh, I'm still in pain, yes, please. Give me one more shot. So they gave me another shot then. That just is sealed, sealed, sealed my fate for the rest of my life. I think I became instantly addicted to such things. 
uh, few mo few moments later, like an hour or so, my friend Emir showed up with some oranges, which is kind of like a custom to bring to Bosnians in hospital. Every time you visit the Bosnian hospital, you bring oranges. <laughs> It's a good thing to do, and uh, he showed up, you know, thinking like, my God, you know, Eldin will be in so much pain, you know, I remember seeing him, you know, leaving the ship and just ho looking horrified. I'm there lying on this bed, completely like, you know, wet, vomit everywhere, all on my body and everything, but with the most blissful expression on my face. Just feeling no pain in complete nirvana. Hey, my friend, thank you for the oranges. How kind of you. <laughs> he thought I was the devil himself. There you go, a little story from St. Clair's Hospital. I think I understood then and there why people end up using drugs. And uh, this is not a story to support such things, but you know, sometimes the pain of existence is so unbearable that there's really no other way to, to get through, the, through it. And as John Lennon said, whatever gets you through the night, it's all right. As long as you don't hurt yourself or others, unfortunately, sometimes we do. Love you all from St. Clair's Hospital in St. John's Newfoundland.